They piped that the wrong way. I'll call the clubhouse. We'll book another 18 for tomorrow. Okay, they cheated on that. They fucked their balls. Yeah, no better time for the breakfast ball than now. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to episode 1AP All Day, Adrian Peterson, Tyler, 128. Oh, right yeah. We're here, baby. It's the second AP episode. We did 126 AP with the Redskins. Yep. Yes. Uh, Commanders, Tyler. Um, the, the artist formerly known as the Redskins. They were the Redskins when he was there. Fair. It was fair. Uh, also, mm -hmm. Burp Bly 11. Nice. Burp Bly 11, Marshall Falk, work done. Uh, big time running back number. I, I don't know anyone else. It's 28. Uh, let's see. Chris Johnson wasn't he twenty eight? Chris Johnson. That's a name I haven't heard in a hot uh, minute. Used to be the fastest forty in yes. all of combine history. Yeah, now Tyreek's got that locked up. No, did John Ross. Him? Did you see Tyreek go oh. to that collegiate track meet? He like went to he because you can run in track meets regardless of if you're in school or not. He goes to an indoor track meet now in the off season and won the sixty by. Half a second. Wait, how how do you just run? Is it college track? Yeah, no, I don't think it was. Tr yeah, college, it was wasn't. It wasn't. Either way, college. it doesn't. You can go to a college like you and I can sign up for a college track meet right now. But you need eligibility. It's no, like considered it's, a sport. It, you, you, just, you can go sign up for it right now. It is open enrollment. You can go. You don't earn points for a team. You don't do any of that shit, but you can compete in the events. It's, what if it's had, for what? USA track and field. It's not yeah, okay, it's yeah, not okay. like you can't just go sign up for yes, a dual meet. Yes, you can. Not for a dual meet. Yeah, go not sign for like up. a dual meet, but you can go for like a, a big... A dual meet is team versus team. I'm talking about a fucking track yeah, meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then go you, sign up. There's guys that the, their fantasy football punishment will be to sign up and you got to run the mile at a college track meet. Somebody did that at NDSU here. Yeah, it is, it is bananas. I and mean, it, what if we just got an entire squad here at You Betcha? <laughs> we just sign up for the track meet and win it. We get a four by four going. No, we just got. We, I mean, we got some. We got some throwers in here. If they got like yeah. a, a hundred meter swim, we'll fucking throw Jake in the pool. That's not track, but yeah. if they got could. like sprints, I, well, is it the same for swimming? Can you have any rando and be in a swim meet? Um, mm, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. It's kind of weird because swim meets are like. Is our like track meets like races like seated and stuff like that? Like, um, yeah, for the first heats for sure. Sometimes like they'll only seed the first and second heat where like you the best times going into that year who they think is the best will get the better lane. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, then yeah, you probably could. Oh, and they also do a bunch of exhibition races and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. meets too that I'm sure that you just throw you into. I mean, you got you got thousands of people right now listening. Like, I have no desire to ever run in a track. I'm just saying this is a great life. fantasy football punishment. I thought it was hilarious. It is also good New Year's resolution. Indoor track meet is like right around New Year's. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. And yeah, speaking of meets and tournaments and open enrollment, uh, it's official. What's official? Pine to Palm. Oh, sign up? we are in. Oh, we're both signed up, which only means one thing. I'm looking for a caddy. I'm texting Lucas right now to be my caddy. I Ooh. already, I already texted him. He's he, out. He, he told me he would be my caddy when we were on the Sweet Shots podcast. Yeah, but he's already got somebody now that it. That fucker. I know. This isn't caddying for me though. Are you in it too? Are you in it too, I'm Trevor? thinking about it. I'm. Well, this you close can't to think right too long because it's lit. It'll like, fill up. It's gonna oh. fill up. So I, I had a reminder set. On my calendar, which naturally popped up in the morning, uh, didn't have coffee yet, so I was still like below ground zero Jesus. in terms of mental capacity, yep. and forgot to. I get a text a couple hours later from Lucas <laughs> saying, "Hey, Pine of Palm registration is open. You guys better go sign up because it's gonna fill up quick." So I'm like scrambling right now. I'm like, I do not want to sit on a waiting list because I don't know what's gonna happen there. And uh, got signed up, flights division. Um, called Tyler, said, are you signed up yet or not? He said, nope, sign me up. So I did. Dropped a pretty penny on, on both of those registrations. I, I did pay you back <laughs> No, I know. I know you did. But it's like, wow, $400 for two guys to go golf in a tournament. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's the most expensive it, round of golf we've paid for, I think. Uh, maybe not. That we we've, better, that we've, we've paid, paid for. for. Yes, correct. But I hope it's not just one round. Yeah, right. Well, no, you're, you're qualifying and then you're guaranteed two more rounds. It's just a matter of whether. Mm. Uh, so this is in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. On one side of the road, you have the DL Country Club, which is the Pine to Palm course. On the other side, you have Lakeview, which is like a par 60, par 62, maybe. Yep. Um, and like that's where the people who don't qualify and then losers brackets um, 
of people who did qualify, they go over to Lakeview to play that course. So this great way to think about it is I absolutely just bought a buy one, get one for golf. So I at least get two rounds. Buy one, get one for 200 bucks. Yeah. And one of no, them's at the country no, club. No, no you, you get three rounds. So, three rounds. Yes. Buy one, get two, two. Yeah, you're guaranteed. Okay, so qualifying. If you don't qualify, then you go into like, I don't know if you call it the, the consolation bracket or the yeah. loser's bracket um, match play. Uh, and there's four people in each bracket of match play, got depending my on what flight you're in. Got my caddy secured. Who? Jeep and Dave. Ooh. Fuck yeah, dude. Lights that, out. I'm be great on the greens. That's gonna well, and he's also just gonna bring immaculate vibes. Dude. Yes. He'll keep me calm. Um so yeah, you go over to the lake view and you play your your two rounds with the the other three guys you're playing with. So if you win, you play the winner of the other group. Okay. If you lose, you play the loser of the other group. Mm -hmm. Um the biggest thing this year is I mean, we don't have a lot of decor in here. Granted, we are sitting on T box of number 17 at Sawgrass. Yep. Um, but Oh, if we could get one, maybe even two trophies, whether that's like, hey, well, at least that's get like bag tags. <laughs> yeah, they like, give you bag tags yeah. no matter what. Fourth, oh, my bag tag is long. That's in the recycling bin <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> well, I know. got rid of that juju <laughs> as soon as all that shit went down. And if you don't know what all that shit that went down was, you have to go back about, I don't know, 100 episodes uh no. look go to like no. august of 2021 yeah the pine of yeah. palm saga um i'm coming off a one-year ban but i'm back baby. how does it feel to be unbanned uh, from episode the 46 palm? guys is the Holy episode fuck, that was a <laughs> long time ago it feels i mean it feels it feels solid like once the tournament was over last year i'm like all right now we have 365 days till pine of palm mm -hmm. and uh i mean we got uh, again got the new sticks uh i i finally got I got my my back itched with the match play format of playing against someone I have no idea who they are. Mm -hmm. um, so it feels good, but you never know. Tournament golf is weird. Anything can happen. Um, mm -hmm. Last year in our, like after qualifying in our bracket, we had some guy, absolute sandbagger. I think he was two under through 18 in the flight number 12, which is like <laughs> guys who are shooting 84. So... He qualified with an 83 or 84, and then he, I think he went two under um, in his first round of match play. So that's yes. what I, that's who oh I would have had to God. play had I won my first match. <laughs> and like, well, it didn't even matter, anyways. Yeah. So we're back, baby. Uh, I don't think it's very good for me, but my only experience on this course whatsoever is caddying for you. I've never played it. Well, I mean, usually caddies know the lay of the land better than the players do. Yeah, but <laughs> you, you just needed a caddy, and I was available. What, what like what are your thoughts going into your first tournament? I could give a shit less. But but you're thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. You're thinking about it. Yeah, well, I mean, I want to do well, but at the end of the day, I don't give a fuck. I I'll I just found this. out that I get 3 rounds of golf out of the deal. So I'm bucks. excited. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if, if those 3 are if I go with 0 and 3, I get 3 rounds for $200. That's fucking good deal. Plus, I get a bag tag, and I get a uh, mm -hmm. towel. We get, yeah. I get a towel, and I get some content for the podcast. It's a win, no matter what, for me. I mean, the content of just of just me playing and you caddying, caddying was electric. And now that fact that we're both playing, did you sign us up for the same time too? Yeah, the seven to seven fifty qualifying, or whatever. Perfect. So I'll have to, I'll email again, and, and they'll probably won't even fucking check their email. They didn't, <laughs> laugh. They didn't two years hey, ago new, when I withdrew. New, new commish. Thank God. Ooh. Yep. We got to get some new blood in there. Um, what I didn't sign us up for, though, was the cart. Ooh. Oh, I'm going to need that for a grandpa. We're not walking. Dang. Okay, so, well, I didn't know he was caddying for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So, so I selected no cart. I'm sure you can just send him an email that they won't see and get a cart <laughs> for you. No, so that's also my another secret weapon that might help me do well. Grandpa has not only been a member out there for a long time, not anymore, was a member there for a long time, but he also marshaled this tournament for years yeah so i got a little insider knowledge from grandpa there um will it help me because there's a huge difference of getting advice and being able to use the advice true um mm -hmm. will it help me i don't know but it's not gonna hurt me i don't think that's gonna be fun with grandpa dave yeah <laughs> you guys will be smoking and joking on the greens and uh yeah well i'm yeah I'm going to make him carry my bag. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa, I know you're 
pushing 80, but are you hand me my five iron quick? <laughs> you know, G. Dave's, he's already, he, he got that text. Mm -hmm. I'm caddying for Tyler. Um, he's training Dude, right now. He is. Uh, <laughs> last night, we went out to dinner with grandpa and grandma, and he just got a bowl of soup. <laughs> we were at a cafe. And I'm like, you're not hungry? Or what? He's like, no, I'm, uh, I'm starting to be, get a little healthier. I got to get ready for golf season. I've been walking on the treadmill a bunch. He's been eating clean. He's lost like 10 pounds. I Jeez. love that. And it's only so he can get in shape for golf season this year because he knows I'm nipping at those fucking heels. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Yeah, and you know, like we look forward to golf season a lot. Just imagine someone who is retired and doesn't really winter down south anywhere. Mm -hmm. Imagine how excited they get when it's like, all right, it's um, it's middle of March right now. There's still nine feet of snow. When are we going to be able to get on <laughs> yeah. the course? Mm -hmm. Well, and he's been talking nonstop about this year's Caddy Girls tournament down in South Carolina. Yep. So he's already stoked for that. Um, so Grandpa's he's in. Maybe that's the real reason he's getting in shape for the Caddy Girls <laughs> tournament. That's end of June. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go I'm gonna. I'll go see. check it out. I'll give him a plug. Go check out the Caddy Girls tournament, guys. If you're, in, if you're in South Carolina and end of June, go to it. It's or fucking fun. Plan a golf trip around it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Get you and three other buddies, plan a golf trip, play a couple courses, go to the Caddy Girls tournament. I wasn't able to make it last year, kid. Um, but apparently it was a really good time. It was an absolute blast. They did, they did a super good job setting everything up. So Hell yeah, dude. Pine to Palm 2023. I'm coming back with a vengeance. Uh I mean, if I if I meet up with my boy Tom again in first round of match play, there's God. no fucking plum. <laughs> if, if I go five and four with the Shanks, imagine what I do to him without the Shanks. That's fair, dude. I really, I I'm jealous of your relationship with Tom. I don't have a golf rival. Yeah, you do. It's Grandpa Dave. Yeah, it's different though. This is different like, though, Jay. Yeah. It's like Grandpa Dave has been. I've known him literally my entire That's life. Fair. It's not like when Grandpa Dave beats me. It's like, whatever. Like, I want to beat him really bad, but he's not my golf rival. He's my grandpa who I want to beat. He's a mentor. Grandpa yeah. Dave's a mentor exactly. and not like a, yeah, yeah. You don't, yeah. Get, right. you don't get bloodthirsty about trying to mm -hmm. beat Grandpa Dave. I want a Tom because well, Ryan what, is bloodthirsty about Tom. What pisses me off even because I went into this match <laughs> thinking this guy's 60, 60 years old. His wife. His, <laughs> I didn't know he was 60. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's a pretty old guy. <laughs> yeah. His wife is caddying for him. I think his wife was sipping on like a Coors Light the entire time just pushing his, get, like pushing his push card. She wasn't giving him any reads or doing no. anything like that she was literally just there to push his cart get out and get exercise hang out with her husband for the day date night. and yeah date day pretty much yeah. um date slaughter of ryan the t-shirt guy the <laughs> fucking guy's got the shanks when i see that parking lot on number six or seven whatever it is i'm literally i'm gonna i'm gonna hook a like a nasty draw like purposely I'm going to hook a nasty draw right over the parking lot i'm gonna land it about 10 because of drivable par four I'm going to land it about 10 feet from the green. Uh, I'll chip it up close, tap in for birdie, and then we head on to another drivable par four, which I'm going to absolutely <laughs> demolish. Or if you miss, just make sure you're headed towards Tom's car, you know? Yeah, to see what he see what he rolls up. And I mean, he's probably going to roll up in like a Mercedes or something. Yeah, yeah but like, all of his winnings from last year. <laughs> God, well, he, the one thing he has over me is a trophy, mm -hmm. yeah. and I do not. Yep. I, you, the only thing I left, got one. The only thing I left with was a one-year ban, <laughs> but it's over. Uh, I can't imagine what like professional athletes feel like when they get, you know, banned for an entire season. Trevor mm -hmm. Bauer, for instance, yeah. um, gets mm -hmm. banned for the entire season. It, it's demoralizing. Oh, dude, I just thought obviously would... different circumstances. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trevor Bauer, and that that's his career. <laughs> that, he, yeah, yeah, that's his, his job. Yes. I mean, it is our job too, but it, it's we have the benefit of if you get banned, our jobs now are doing better. <laughs> <laughs> because we have phenomenal content More out content. of it. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it couldn't have worked out any better. Uh, I just came up with a great idea. Jake, you're coming to the tournament. We're micing up Grandpa Dave. Ooh, that's, yes. a, that's a great Grandpa idea. Grandpa Dave on the hot mic is yes. going to be electric. <laughs> that's a phenomenal idea. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to... Yeah, that'd be sweet. I'll just put one of them 360 cameras on the top of your <laughs> push cart. Just you might everything. have to stay. You like. You might have to keep Grandpa Dave focused though, because he's gonna be he's gonna be smoking and joking with everybody around no, that course. See, that's that's I think another way he excels. He's gonna be able to get into the other team's heads. He'll be like, yeah. come off as this innocent old man, and then yeah. go over there and give someone the wrong read. Well, we're gonna. I, I'm gonna. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm going to request that we play, play qualifier together. Okay. Um, and I think this is probably going to be your first time breaking 90 because it, it's just a, it's a different atmosphere. Oh yeah. When you're actually when you're when you're 100 percent playing for a score that means something. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good it's going to be a good day to do it. Yeah, I'm going to put Union Green on the map with a pine to palm dub. Hell yeah. But do you think you guys should play qualifying together? Why not? You guys are going to be like, joking, together you're joking around, though, you know? Trust me. Shooting Trevor, the I don't, there I don't, won't be any joking uh, at I don't, a tournament oh, with Ryan. I don't joke around on the course. <laughs> no. Well, it depends on the situation. I'm not going to be joking around at Pine and Palm. I'll, just, I'll smoke and joke all you want yeah. if we're just out playing a casual round. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's all, it's business. And it, I mean, literally mm -hmm. and figuratively. Okay. So we're in. We can look forward to August now. We've mm -hmm. got something planned. Uh, Pine to Palm 2023. Speaking of uh, allegations. Wait, are we allowed to play it? We're, we're sponsored golfers. Yeah, I got a blue ball yeah, for maybe one more week. Okay, guys. Oh. oh, it's It's not us making the decision. We have to wait until... The contract officially starts, and like, it's like we're legally not allowed to tell you. So please stop being mad at us. Yeah, someone uh, someone had sent us message message last week. Said um, I listened up until the point where you said you couldn't tell us the the club deal yet, and then I just I got I had to turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I had to turn it off, which is fine. Um, the contract's being signed this week. We have the clubs, so it's not like well, hopefully we get this contract so we can tell them. Yeah, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's gonna it'll happen. So. Um, but speaking of allegations, Tyler, Tiger Woods. <laughs> Wait, what? Again? So many. Oh we can do God. this about once every two years. Allegations, Tiger He's Woods. He's back in the hot seat. Here's the thing about Tiger Woods. I want to first, I want to start by first saying, I don't think he would be of the magnitude that he is without all the shit that happened in the past. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we wouldn't have had like the 2019 comeback story. Correct. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. But like what he might have a different legacy if none of this shit happened. You know, would it be like, but I like Michael Jordan's biggest fuck up was the gambling stuff. Yeah. And we still talk about him all the time. We don't talk about him all the time, though. He, we, he's on sports. They talk about him on sports center every morning. No, they don't. Yes, they do. You don't Eddie, fucking tell me you're watching Sports Center every morning because you're not. At least three mornings a week. Okay, what? well, uh, how how should I structure my NCAA bracket then? I don't know. I don't care about Ooh, college basketball. Trevor does. UCLA. Anyway, I'm going Gonzaga. You're an idiot. I just pick them every year. I don't know why. So Tiger's got new allegations with this girl that he's been with. I, I don't even remember her name. I'm not even going to bring light to her name because for, for you to try and take down the goat for $30 million um, is, is absolutely asinine. You think you, I would too. Wait, wait, what? Well, that's, 30 mil? That's the thing, though. Yeah. Holy. Yeah, I'm the, on her side. I'm good, bro. That's the thing, though. Like, if someone starts dating Tiger Woods and they don't get married... And he like he breaks up with them. They, per, I'm assuming mm, yeah. there's there's a fat prenup in place, or yeah. there's some sort of contract where if we break up, you get nothing. Um, they're going out of this relationship with nothing, and now to add this on top of it, she's going out with an even worse name. Now, if 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 this stuff's true, I, it's, this is all speculation. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it's not. But um, she's got nothing after that. Okay, so explain to me what she is alleging Tiger did. Okay, so. What happened was Tiger Woods has been dating this gal for six years. She was the restaurant manager at, I believe, one of his restaurants in Jupiter, Florida. Okay. They started dating about six years ago, and he, he'd had enough of her, Okay, to put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, so he broke up with her, and the way he did that was very interesting. Um, and if, <laughs> if, you're in a, if you're in a relationship you're trying to get out of, take notes. Um <laughs> He promises her a short vacation, right? I don't know where it was to, but he brings her to the airport. And when she's at the airport, Tiger Woods' team, I'm assuming the people who, who drove her to the airport, had said, like, you're no longer allowed in this house that you live in anymore. All the doors are locked. You're not welcome back to this house. <laughs> Essentially, Tiger's breaking up with you. Um, so he had his assistants dump her for him? Well, you get a vacation. You get free vacation out of it, so it's like. Doug, did she actually get the vacation? I do not know. I hope so. I, I I don't know if she got the vacation or not. Hopefully, she did because I mean that's a huge blow to 
get broken up by. Uh, here's by the Tiger worst Woods. thing is I'm looking this up right now. I don't even think she got the vacation. Fuck. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Plane ticket back to her hometown. I don't even yeah. think she... <laughs> yeah, they had plane ticket to get mom and dad's here. house. Yep. Uh, um, yeah, she did go to the airport. She didn't get the vacation, though, it doesn't say. <laughs> so what's happening with this lawsuit is uh, this gal is suing Tiger for his housing trust um, for $30 million, saying that they had an agreement that she could live in the house for 11 years and only lived in it for six years, so she has five years left to live in it. But and somehow doors that- are locked. The five years equates to thirty million dollars. Well, it's like, um, you know, it, it, it it's like, uh, what do they, what do they call it? Like, um, like damages, like emotional damages. Yeah, somehow? Like, yeah. emotional damages, yeah. uh, financial shit like that. I'm not. I I don't. I know nothing about litigation. That's just what I'm assuming. Hmm. Um, so she's suing Tiger for thirty million for the housing trust. Uh, she's got five years left to live in it, and. Um, the biggest part of this, this whole saga, is the NDA. And Trevor, NDA stands for non-disclosure agreement, meaning uh-huh. if you sign this, you cannot... It's the thing we had you sign when you came on this podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what this lady did was uh, she claimed that Tiger had like sexually assaulted her, like sexual assault allegations, to bypass the NDA because what the NDA said was um, any disputes she had against him had to be heard in private arbitration in a private arbitration hearing. So she wants to bypass this NDA so that her allegations can be publicly heard mm-hmm. um, about you know sexual assault, what he did to her, all this kind of stuff. But because she signed the NDA, she has to do it in a private arbit- arbitration hearing, meaning the world does not get to see what all went down behind the scenes so the sexual assault stuff definitely changes the story because there there there's a certain there's a certain act and i can't remember what the name of the act is but if there's like sexual assault or or, or are you some talking sort about of, the speak out act the speak out act like sexual assault or domestic violence something like that bypasses or it like falls underneath that act so so she can break her nda correct yes and that's why she's claiming that is so she can break the nda and all this can be heard public um, but apparently when she filed the suit, there was a box you could check saying, was there sexual allegations involved? And she checked no on it. Oh, Ooh. and then she publicly just said there was. Yes. Interesting. I believe so. Mm. Um, this is all coming from TMZ because it's most reputable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually, I'm getting, I'm reading this on <laughs> CNN right now. Actually, uh, depending on. Yeah, you might not believe that it's much better than <laughs> TMZ, but <laughs> I only uh, trust BuzzFeed. Yeah, there yeah. you go. So that's all. That's everything that's going down right now. Tiger breaks up with his girlfriend. Um, be, she says that she has five more years to live in this house. He also gave her financial compensation and housing after the breakup to get her back on her feet. Right. Uh, but now she's claiming sexual assault so she can break the NDA and all these allegations can be heard publicly. And that's where we're at right now. Also, it is absolutely fucking bananas that just by dating Tiger Woods, you guys come to an 11 year housing agreement. I don't Yo, know where this what? 11 years comes like, from. Like what, at what point in their dating relationship, they're like, uh, in the honeymoon phase, going to movies and having nice dinners. <laughs> like, Hey, so how long do you want to live with me? I was thinking like 11 years would be a good contract. Like we could maybe, maybe we could write that up quick. Yeah. It's like, maybe it was, <laughs> maybe, maybe the number 11 is the number of year, like the number of tournaments Tiger won the year that this gal was born. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. It's just like such a strange concept to me. Like the only contract Becca and I have ever signed together are like lease agreements and our marriage license. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the, the, the idea Look. of having to date someone and come to a housing agreement is weird as shit. When the 11 years too, yeah. there, there's obviously some significance to it. I don't know what that is. Maybe she gets like full pension from her job after. I, I have no idea. Unless. Yeah. I don't know why 11. Why don't do. And be a team. Why well, do teams, it at all? Do the one year deal and then like the team option the second year and just keep resigning. Yeah, like Tiger, Tiger, none of this happens if you don't sign this fucking agreement. Yeah. Why don't they just do like, like just mon- you invited her to live yeah. in your house and then if there's no contract, you can just tell her to leave whenever. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know why they just didn't go like month by month like property management groups. <laughs> they're, in like, a, they're in a month to month dating lease. 
She's like just uh, like <laughs> in an apartment search and Tiger just like puts his house up for her. He's like, hey, you want to come live here? It's month by month lease. It's funny because if you date me, the lease is nothing. Mm-hmm. You can live here for the next 11 years. Yeah. But month by month is a little, a little easier because you can cut that baby off whenever you want. Is that how that works? I'll have to just date my leasing agent and I get free rents. <laughs> probably, dude. Shit, man. Because she that. probably lives there for free. Yeah. It's kind of like an RA at a dorm. They just yeah. can, they get free housing. <laughs> you know, if they're like fucking fucking shoveling the sidewalks or like making sure that Trevor's not slamming Everclear. Except on RAs, a Friday are, night. RAs are fucking narcs. Facts. True. I had a great RA. He's actually, he was two years older than me. He's from my high school. Um, he graduated with my brother. Great guy. Mm. Mm. Trevor, you give off RA vibes. I was never an RA. Mm. Doesn't You're he give off been. RA vibes? I feel like you would yell at me kind for of, having yeah. having what? three fucking liquid ices in or natty ices in my dorm room. Uh, <laughs> considering you, I had bottles in my room. Uh, no. Ah, sick, dude. Do you know what? Was, do, do you know what was the worst though? It's like over Christmas break, everyone's like, dude. Uh, Make sure you clear all the booze out of your fridge because <laughs> they'll, they're literally going to come in and they're going to search everybody's room over Christmas. <laughs> no, and then, and then there's the guy like, dude, just put it in your closet, dude. They can't search your closet unless they have a warrant. <laughs> everyone, everyone seems to know a lot about litigation and lawyers mm-hmm. and, and the law when it comes to RAs and like campus security, whoever the fuck checks the dorm rooms over Christmas break. Um, hot no tip for you does. guys. If you are genuinely worried about hiding your booze, put it in the ceiling tiles. That's what we did. We, we never had drop ceiling. Really? Yeah. Or just finish it before you fucking leave. <laughs> or, or just, just like the same finish. night just you Just chug it, shit, bro. Dude. Chug that shit, dude. <laughs> uh, God. We, we left a bottle in the ceiling tile with a note. And I'm really curious if anyone Ooh. ever found it. Like our last day in the dorms, we left a bottle like, this is for you, Chris in the room. Yeah. Um, we did a lot of dumb shit in here. Hope you do too. Pay that shit. Did you leave your number Tyler? on there at least? Like, so no. Nope. Oh my god. No. Nope. I mean, if I'm buying a bottle of booze in college, I'm gonna. Drink uh, it because me and my, I had no money. My dorm, yeah. my dorm roommate and I were both ty- we were both Tyler, so we uh-huh. just said from the Tylers. Mm. We should uh, we should each go back to our freshman dorm room and just see how things are. Okay. Yeah, room one. Wa- walk up, walk up, knock on the door, be like, "Hey, man." Not here for any reason specifically, but <laughs> just you, checking it out. You, no. still live, you, still live here. you need the key to get in, so you're just kind of like putzing around outside the door, waiting for someone to come out or yeah. in, so you can get in the dorms. My old door, my old dormitory got uh, renovated into suites, so nice. they knocked out the wall in between in between two rooms, and they made them one. My dorm was fucking borderline a prison cell, so mine, mine was too, dude. It all like <laughs> it had actually had shit. high ceilings. It had all all white walls, uh, like yep. like kind of like a dirty white though. <laughs> um, and I mean, it was enough for uh, we went the bunk bed style. We, we did Ooh. two lofted, both of so like bunk beds, two bunk beds, but no bottom bunks. So we could put like couches and shit under. Yeah, dude, you got the couch under one of them and the TV under the other. Dude, that's exactly what we yeah. did. We cornered mm-hmm. the beds. Yeah. So we were sleeping feet to feet. <laughs> Yeah, we we had actually had, we had like multiple arrangements. Oh, yeah. We both went lofted, uh, like entertainment systems underneath, and then we both went solo beds on the ground, and then we went bunk bed style. My buddy, he had like, or my roommate, he had um, blankets draped over like at each side of it, so it's kind of like in his own layer. Oh, what was he doing in there? Jerking, jerking <laughs> off, probably. I don't know. Oh, uh, anyway, Tiger. Good luck, my guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope you didn't sexually assault her. And so you can win this whole thing. Well, she checked no on the box. I know, but she's still alleging it. I mean, we, we got it. Yes, yes. Yeah. In, well, innocent until proven guilty, though. Yes. Mm-hmm. So yep. uh, he doesn't need this right now. We need him no. to be playing in fucking majors right now. We don't we don't need him to be thinking about this. God. And now Charlie's old enough to understand yep. the shit going on because he wasn't during the first Tiger scandals. Yep. <laughs> um lastly Tyler before we hit the break um TBC Sawgrass players championship last week Scottish Sheffield dominated again he's on such a fucking tear uh two things from that tournament I watched a lot of it mm-hmm. uh one of the guys who hit a hole in one he was double gloved <laughs> what Jesus he had two gloves on <laughs> and I don't e- it wasn't even that cold out well, that, wasn't I, it raining the one day I have though? no yeah, it was raining yeah they rain delay but it was it still wasn't that cold out I, I I'm so 
concern? It wasn't. It's not like he was double wrapping it either. It was one on each hand, like he was about to do surgery or something. Like he's like a baseball player. Yes, yes, yes precisely. Was I'm he wearing sure he baseball was, gloves? Yeah, he had, he had Franklin across the knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cutter, yeah. cutter gloves. That's yeah. so strange to me. It just shows you, like, <sighs> the gear you have and what you wear does not determine what type of golfer you I are. I guess, yeah. Maybe we got to go back on, were they black gloves? They were. They were. Double psycho. I'm out on this guy. <laughs> they were. Because a black golf glove just, it, it, it doesn't, I don't know, black doesn't go with many colors in general. The only way you can wear a black golf glove, glove and not be a psycho, I know Alan is listening and he's right over there. He wears a black golf glove, is if you are in all black. And then that, it looks sweet. Then it looks cool. Mm. Then like it looks cool. head to toe black, you can wear a black golf glove. Any other time, no. Yeah. I'm going to wear all black against Tom at Pine to Palm this year. <laughs> it's literally going to be his funeral. <laughs> I mean, it may be. He's old. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. He's not playing Tom gets the chance. <laughs> God forbid has a heart attack. Oh, yeah, we I obviously would never wish that upon yeah. anybody. He is a good guy, too. But he did beat my friend, so I hate him. Is he a good guy though? <laughs> he was he was very nice. <laughs> yeah, but he's also probably driving a Mercedes and like so. Ryan, from but, all but, his but, but but like <laughs> he's he, he's a I think he's a country club guy. You helped paid for his Mercedes <laughs> with his with his winnings at buying the Palm. Well, I'm gonna take that right back this next year. <laughs> so. Yeah, you got to get him there in a Pontiac G6. You got to take away those winnings, make mm-hmm. him downgrade his car. Pontiac G6 is a vibe. It is everyone's high school car when in the mid 2000s. Oh, Pontiac, I had a Pontiac Grand Am. Yep. White with like yep. the three, the three, like the three stripes. Along the front bumper? <laughs> no, along the side. They weren't like phys- they weren't uh, actual stripes. In the- stripes. They like were ridges. like they were like yep. ridges. Yep. yep. Into the side. Mm-hmm. It's a classic. Um that thing was in so many accidents. <laughs> um, anyway, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. And when we come back. We're back on the weirdest golf courses in the world. We're talking Guantanamo Bay, nine hole par 36er. Harold and Kumar. See you in a bit. Union Green. Great golf balls, Ryan. I mean, we put the, we put them to the test when we were down south. We did, and I lost a lot of them, but it wasn't the ball's fault. And honestly, it doesn't even matter. I, I don't even really look to see if I'm hitting a pin drop or a T-bird. I just look to I look at the Union Green logo. Mm-hmm. Uh, the pearly whites is what I like to call them in my bag. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing that I actually, I had a complaint about Union Greens when we first started with them was that there was no numbers on them to differentiate between yours and my ball. Debunked. Debunked. Right underneath the Union Green logo, there are stars. And oh, there yeah. are a different number of stars on each ball. So you can tell them apart. It's kind of like the captain's logo on a on a NFL jersey. Yep. It's got like the one star, two star. I mm-hmm. I, I don't even. Or like it, generals. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm star. only I'm only hitting the box with fours because I'm a four star general out there. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, and what you had broken the golf ball, the dozen golf ball deal down for us last week. So if you go to UnionGreen.com and you yes. check out you check out the T birds. T birds. You buy three dozen, you get one dozen free. Now, on top of that, if you use promo code double bogey 20, you get extra 20% off of that. And each box of balls comes out to what price? It's like $11.99 a box. So let's say $12 a dozen. That's le- $11.99 is less than $1, one dollar per ball. I need to find it to make sure we're right <sighs> again. Tyler will find the actual math he did last week, but I'm going to say it right now. You can go out, you can buy a $40, $50, $60 box of balls. You can lose them in one round. You can lose them in two rounds. It doesn't matter. That extra money that you're paying for balls that you're going to lose anyways could go to the Bev cart. It could go to playing five bucks a hole with your buddy. Yep. It could go to a lot better things than trying to play a premium golf ball when we're not premium golfers. Mm -hmm. Also, um, Also, when I say it, you go play a premium golf ball, you're still playing a premium golf ball. I, I this is not coming from me. It's not actually not coming from anybody. It's complete speculation. But these balls are built in a premium golf ball factory. Mm-hmm. I don't actually know if that's true. Premium golf balls at a normal dude price. And I mean, if, if even if you go to the big uh, the big warehouse, if you go to Costco and you buy the balls there, these are cheaper. I believe they, they are. Okay, so I have it. You were 100 percent correct. It is. 
buy three boxes of T-Birds, get your fourth box free, which already brings the total down to $15 a box. Then you throw on the double bogey 20 promo code on top of the four boxes of balls you just got brings it down to 11.99 per so then that's yeah it's less than you go to your local country club they're selling the balls that they pull out of the river and out of the lakes for a dollar a ball mm. and so the premium balls are too premium or yeah, yeah you get you get you know what brands those are yeah they're selling those for two they're selling top flights and shit like that for one and you're getting a better deal with the Union Green. And it's not even a waterlogged ball. Correct. For $47, you are getting four dozen golf balls. Yes. We have been ripping Union Greens on the simulator. And they are dirty. They're tattered. They're cracked. Because those suckers have been hitting. <laughs> We've been abusing them. Everywhere. Been, yes. Hey, they're, I actually, they're everywhere. Trevor, I can see I, one, two, three, <laughs> four. Seven right by me. Right Trevor's here. got on the seven floor right by in our cords. Um, actually, someone did tell me that the reason they're breaking on the simulator is because we fucking hammer the ball so hard and then they just abruptly stop on a screen. Yes. So that's mm -hmm. the way like that's why golf balls in the simulator will break sometimes. And I didn't know that. I thought we were just like, maybe we're getting really good. Also, we're think, really about, yeah. think about us. <laughs> if we have a brand new ball, it lasts maybe eight shots in a normal round. Yeah. Whereas yep. the ball is you get two full rounds out of one <laughs> yeah. ball here. Well, here's the other thing, too, in a scramble, um, especially like. I usually hit last because Tyler's a safe guy. Tyler yep. will put one safe. Someone else will put one, put one safe or try to put one safe. And at that point, I'm just going for it. Mm -hmm. One <laughs> out, of, out of your shoes. One mm -hmm. out of those 10 shots is going to be good. The other nine, I'm never going to see that ball again. So not and only it doesn't matter because you have four dozen Union Green T-Birds for $47. Correct. You want to get your, your scramble team a little gift? Say, boys, got to see each a sleeve of Union Greens. We're only going to need one sleeve each because we're going to be absolutely dialed today. Also, housekeeping for Union Green. They are sold out of the black poor caddies. So you keep if you want a black one, keep your eye on the website until they come back. The white ones are in stock, though, if you want to get a white one. That's what I got grandpa for Christmas. I mean, if that just tells you anything, we've been we've been preaching this since day one with Union Green. Back nine bartenders. Nice little stainless steel nipple on the top. Water resistant. Water resistant. Looks like a coffee cup. Booze no only. Marshall is going to understand what the hell that thing is. He's thinking you're getting a little coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, bring out your back nine bartender. Yep. Shot glasses are down in the reservoir below. You got everything you need. Okay. I know we've been talking T-Birds and poor caddies this whole time. But Ron, I would like to formally challenge you after the podcast to a closest to the pin. TPC 17 with the pin drops. Deal. Deal. Done. I think it's Saturday pin too, so it's it's uh, back right yep. of number seventeen. Yep. I so. I don't know how you have that memory. Ah, it's but. not well, front it, right. It's right behind you. Yeah. Oh, cool. So I mean, I watch so much Players Championship. I know exactly how to play this pin. Um, it's a uh, buck thirty-one down five and a half. So probably going to play <laughs> buck twenty-seven. How's the wind, Ryan? Uh, it's probably about half a mile an hour. There's, from coming from the west, okay. and it's pushing away from the water. It's pushing back onto the green. So I'm going to try and hit a nice. Uh, I'm trying to hit a nice little baby draw. Got to be on the green to count, as always. Okay. UnionGreen.com. Go check them out. Okay, you guys saw our clips on the Prison View golf course, which might be the strangest golf course in the world. Um, a buddy of mine just golfed what might be the worst golf course. Also still in the, the topic world. of prisons too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I have a buddy who may have just played the worst golf course in the world. It is called Lateral Hazard in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. And the only reason, like you Google it, it looks okay, right? <laughs> And I wouldn't dog on a course unless I have gotten firsthand footage from somebody on that course. The course is an absolute dog track, dude. Not only is it in Guantanamo Bay, it is there is no grass. No grass whatsoever except for the greens. And the greens grass is like you just mowed our grass really short. And the, the greens look kind of nice from a distance. But I'm telling you guys that this is in the middle of the fucking desert. And not like in the middle of the desert, Arizona. It is just rocks and shit. So what you're saying is if you're going on a golf trip to Guantanamo Bay. Don't. Uh, number one, don't. <laughs> but number two, uh, bring an old set of clubs. Oh, yeah. Okay. He had to rent clubs when he was there. 
and he sent me a, a very close up picture of the rental clubs. Those things have been through hell and back. As has everybody who has went to Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the golf clubs is an uh, it's a perfect depiction of the people who are who were because it's shut down, correct? Who were in prison there for who knows how long? Holy <laughs> shit, Ryan! Is that per- actually looks like um, it looks like a plastic chew toy that my dog has had in his mouth for two years straight. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Uh, I can't even read. Well, there's a Wilson P wedge, a nitro blaster putter, and that thing's Ooh. even chewed up too. Yeah, and then there's a nine slash pitching wedge. So you can either go nine, <laughs> wait, wait, nine wait, wait, slash wait. pitching wedge. It's like it, fuck it, it doesn't matter. You can yeah, use yeah. it as your nine or your P wedge. There's a uh-huh. nine slash P wedge, and there's a nine iron. Holy shit! We'll post the we'll post these photos to uh to the clip from this, but okay, let. Uh, let me give you a little bit of a lowdown on how this course works. Okay. So it is a nine hole course, right? Uh, par 36. And I, the one the one thing that is kind of its saving grace, and my buddy told me that if this course was kept up, it would be a pretty fun course to play. Yeah, great he views. Sa- he said yep. it's very scenic. The layout is pretty cool, but there is no grass. You tee off on a cement platform with some turf like this, right? And the cement platform is about half the size of the turf we have here. Yeah. So kind of like you're throwing discus. And there's only uh-huh. tees for righties. <laughs> so there's no <laughs> no tee on the left side. At least in the pictures he sent me of he sent me like a pictures of three tee boxes. Mm-hmm. No tees on the left side for lefties. So if you're lefty, don't even fucking think about golfing at lateral hazard. So like what? So th- like the tee box colors probably goes in order of like um, like black and white stripes khaki and then orange is the tips right <laughs> yep Jeez. exactly uh so, so depending on what what type of jumpsuit you're in that day uh <laughs> is depending on what 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 tea boxes, t- yeah. boxes you're playing mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. like uh i've been watching a lot of alex murdoch um yep try uh he was in a khaki jumpsuit one day so alex is probably gonna be playing middle tees he's playing khakis yeah yep mm-hmm. okay so the tea box cement platform right so then you hit your ball it's in the fairway right uh the fairway is just desert gravel hard rocks everywhere and they know this they're well aware of the conditions of the fairway so each golfer is given a small foot by foot piece of turf and so you are allowed to pick your ball up out of the fairway and place it on this piece of turf and you play on the turf every single shot from the fairway i wonder what the course record is at this at at this place it's like 41 because uh, like (laughs) Can Obviously, you imagine the rollout? Oh, not a, not only the rollout. You have a perfect lie every single yeah. time. Mm-hmm. If you guys think simulator mm-hmm. golf is easy, go to the G Bay <laughs> yeah. and play on a piece of one by one turf, and things are going to go really well for you. I'm going to yes. go there. Okay. I'm going to shoot my best record. So my buddy told me that the most demoralizing thing about this course is not topping one into the desert. It's not chunking a rock. It's when you hit your piece of turf further than the ball oh god because it's just loose on top of this gravel and so you hit your ball sometimes and the turf goes fucking flying too you try to take a divot that turf is going what kind of hazards do they have here uh, i mean the whole lateral fucking, the ones. whole course is a, the whole course is a hazard because you're playing basically out of sand and gravel yeah but there's no like water or anything on this course is there um not in any of the videos you sent me but there could be I mean, Guantanamo Bay is on a bay. Okay, so who are like who are some notable uh, criminals that have went to Guantanamo Bay? Uh, Harold and Kumar. Okay, that's another good one. They also went to White Castle. They did. Which, yeah, that combo in itself does not make sense. Here's the turf mat that you carry around with you. Holy There's no shit. water. What I see. No water. Okay. Things are looking good. Par 36 could yeah. shoot under. Okay. So this picture I'm showing you, Ryan, could potentially be, it looks like the P-Rock like parking lot at some of the small town courses, right? Yep. Wrong. Mm-hmm. That's the middle of the fairway. Jesus. Oh my God. <laughs> it's also, like cart path. It's all cart path. Hey, yeah. There are no cart paths. Yeah. Uh, the course is actually cart path only. Yeah. Which means you could yeah. basically drive wherever <laughs> you want. It reminds me of uh, uh, of the parking lot at our our baseball field in high school. Just pure exactly. Gravel. Yep. It's like ah, oh, we, we never thought to play a par three on there. What do you got for me, Jake? Uh, to answer your question, it's just a lot of terrorists. 
<laughs> Jesus. Okay. Well, it makes yeah, sense. I, My buddy's in the military, and that's why he was in Guantanamo Bay. He wasn't like vacationing there or a prisoner. I wasn't like he uh, didn't sign up for like a scramble tournament in Gu- in G Bay. Yes. Yeah, so he's in the service. You got some downtime. You go hit some balls, right? Yeah. Um, so another thing about the fairways is lateral hazard used to be a a firing range. Okay. So it was a gun range. So all over this fairway rock are just random old shell casings and projectiles all over the fucking place. So if here's great a, place for someone who reloads to go play golf, like yeah, except, not only are you on the tee box uh, stocking up on old tees that people left in the ground, you're also stocking up on brass so that you can bring that shit back and reload it. Brass ain't cheap these days. So he said that, yeah, it, back in the day, it used to be a machine gun range. So you're finding shit like this all over the place. That's kind of sweet. Yeah, I think that's actually cool. Do they have carts or do they drive around Humvees? Carts. Okay. <laughs> carts. But I have a note from him on the carts as well. He said the golf carts drive like that one friend's car from the 1990s where you have to hold steering wheel upside down just to <laughs> drive straight. They have been abused. <laughs> Uh, Pontiac Grand Am. Uh, and then another thing about the fairways, and he has no idea why they're like this. There's just, you know, like hikers will go on a hike and they just stack some fucking rocks for no reason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Randomly mm-hmm. in the middle of the fairway, someone will just have a giant pile of rocks. Okay, just, people, it, it, don't do that. If, you can, we're it, trying to play golf. They're teed yeah. up their ball, dude. They had to tee it up in the middle of the fairway. So, yeah, that's true. I wonder if it's like no one ever did like the 100 yard marker from the green. Oh. So someone was just ranging it there and then they sure. built that little thing so someone could fi- figure it out. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, you know how we feel about um, putting the, the, the bunker rakes in the wrong spot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Another bunker rake situation here is stack yeah. rocks. I get it. Stack rocks are kind of cool. But at the same time, like, I'm trying to go low at G Bay. Yeah, so we don't we, put that hat. The, the whole course is already hazard. Don't add one more into it. So Whistling Straits, right, has the most bunkers on any golf course. Lateral Hazard has the least bunkers on any golf course because it's just one, it's one giant bunker. bunker. It's one bunker. <laughs> you can't down your club ever. So you know the first thing that comes to mind when I think <laughs> about this is um, Cuba. Uh, is cu- Cuba is is what of the United States? It's a territory? No, it's no, not. It's, it's, not. it's that's, its own separate that's, nation. Uh, that's Guam I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's been some solid ball players to come out of Cuba. <laughs> yeah. So... Well, there are no golfers. Though. When I'm nope. thinking of like, hey, if we're trying to recruit for a scramble team mm. and, we're, and we're playing... With, let's say we're playing four-man scramble on whistling straights, a lot of bunkers... We got to start recruiting from G Bay. We got to start yeah, recruiting from yeah. Cuba because these guys are elite at hitting out of gravel, sand, basically anywhere that's not a fairway. These guys can play out of. And I'm telling you right now, you recruit one of these guys to play on a four man scramble team. There's the W we've been looking mm-hmm. for. Well, like think about just even in, in like baseball warmups, you put the weight on the bat, right? You swing the bat around, the bat feels lighter. You, you're using it in a, a more difficult situation to make the regular situation easy. Correct. Mm-hmm. You get them on a course with grass and, and easy lies. Yeah. Their lights fucking out. Yeah. They That's- could be lights out or they could be like, hey, I'm completely out of my element. Can I just drop over here in the sand trap <laughs> yeah. back? because I know I can stick one within four feet? Right. It's the mm-hmm. first time in a scramble ever where we're taking every sand shot because we know this guy is going to stick it. Yeah. Close. Yeah. Uh, he's he's he hits his tee shot and he never hits tee shots well because he's not hitting on turf. Um, <laughs> he's hitting on actual grass and he's not using an actual tee because it's the, a whole it's the, a whole. The tees on the tee boxes, too, are like those little white, like rubbery oh, things yeah. that are like at sweet shots. Yeah. Um. So like his tee shots actually tend to be great, even though they're really not, because it's going to yep. put us in a bad situation where mm-hmm. then he thrives. I mean, the scrambling percentage of this person is going to be out of the roof. Uh, the best. He's like, there's no one that can compete with this guy in scrambling. Now, the question is like Ryder Cup whistling straights. What like what team what what teams he on? Is he playing as a solo? USA and Europe. Yeah. I mean, if he's coming from the military base, he could be playing USA. He's going to have to declare. Yeah, what happens in, in the situation like that? It should- like, fucking Joaquin Neiman. I mean, I know he's in the live now, mm-hmm. but just doesn't get to play in the Ryder Cup. Yeah I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that whole scenario looks like. Just flip a coin. 
that's kind of shitty. Big time. That sucks, dude. Because like, I feel like that's a super cool event that everyone would want to play in. And it's like, mm, Joaquin, no, you don't get to. Yeah. Where is he from? Um, He's from South America. I forget what. Oh, yeah. Him and. Or uh, uh, Cam Smith is from Australia, ain't he? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, who so does he, he doesn't play get for? to play. He doesn't get to play. He just is not in it. Yeah. He's on his own continent. Maybe he's got to get uh, citizenship in Europe or the U.S. Well, that's the thing, too, is uh, Australia used to be a British territory, but culturally it's way closer to America. True. So true. Unless it's just U.S. and then Europe is just everything else besides U.S. Could be like U- world. Well, U.S. against the world. Yeah. That'd be a sick. Oh, tournament. they're from yeah. Chile. Hmm? Joaquin Neiman's from Chile. Chile. Uh-huh. Okay. USA, a new Ryder Cup format, USA versus the world. Or is it I team? I mean, that's the Olympics. Always, yeah. That's it's always USA versus, versus, versus everyone. everyone. Oh, golf is in the Olympics, but it's not team format. Xander Schauffele had won a gold medal mm-hmm. at, at the, the Tokyo Olympics. Yep. Now, what... Like... If you own a pr- if you own a prison, I don't even know. <laughs> if there's a prison, like what is the draw? I get prison view is this whole like trying to build it's character. For him, yeah, you know. But like, I suppose it gives the guys in the military something to do. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's public or not. I don't have any of the those kept. There's very limited information on online, except for a few Golf Digest articles and stuff. And I'm sure someone has done a video on it. So before the, all of you are like. Uh, someone did a video on this 10 years ago. Okay, sorry. And I'll be uh, honest, if someone has done a video on anything we've talked about, we probably haven't watched it. Correct. We're all original, Tyler. Yeah, well, this is coming. Uh, the, all the pictures you're about to see in the, the reel we make from this are Snapchats from my friend. So that's who we're getting our information yes. from. Um, I, I don't know if this course is public or not. It might be. It has to be if he's playing on it, right? Well, no, because I don't think you and I could just fly into Guantanamo Bay and play this course. I'll ask him because it, it might be on the naval base. So actually. is your buddy, a, is he a country club guy? No. Is it a private no. course <laughs> Absolutely that not. nobody can access? Um, at the same time, I'm, I'm wondering what the clubhouse looks like. When I say clubhouse, probably just a garage that they store three mm-hmm. carts in. Or a barn. Like, Jake. I don't know if you want to... Like, if you want to grab a bite to eat, do you have to go over to the cafeteria, like the prison cafeteria? Mm-hmm. Uh, is this prison even still a thing? You got to get baked beans and bread. Baked beans and bread. And Jake, if can you-, you look up the clubhouse, see if you can book a tea time? Yeah. Um, lateral hazard. Cuba. Um, also, another great thing to play for. You play your buddy for their meal at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, that's not a bad idea. What if we could? This is like, I know we talked about the longest yard thing at Prison View. I feel like the stakes are even higher if you're an inmate at Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If, if you're if like terrorists versus terrorists, like you got to watch where you're walking because you know <laughs> the type of booby traps these guys are setting up. <laughs> it makes the game of golf a hell of a whole lot interesting. Well, I don't. It would be bananas if they're letting terrorists play at lateral Jesus. hazard. Yeah, they should not be allowed to play no. golf because golf is a game that is a lot of fun and it's enjoyable and it gives you just some some peace in life mm-hmm. they, they don't deserve any of that no mm-hmm. none it's a gentleman's game yes even though they let my buddy on there not a gentleman sorry pal but thank you to your buddy for s- serving our country yes mm-hmm. military guy shouts really to you i don't know that. if he wants me to say his name but shouts to you brother what do you got for us on the clubhouse jake yeah i mean it looks like it's op- owned and operated by the u.s military in some way shape or form so we'll never get to play it this is the closest we'll ever get to playing it and honestly, I'm not that heartbroken. There's a lot of there's a lot of military golf courses. Like mm-hmm. the course that I um God, well, uh Moose Run, the course I played in Alaska in Anchorage. Um it used to be an old military base. So I mean they still did like training and stuff there, but there's like helicopters and shit flying all over the place. The fairways are really weird because if you like slam your club down in the fairway, it's hollow underneath. Because huh. what they did was they cut down a bunch of trees to make this course and then they buried the trees underneath. Interesting. So, I mean, you're not going to have a comfortable ride riding in a cart <laughs> or on one of those uh, surfboards. We, we took the surfboards out on that course. Mm-hmm. It's not ideal because there's, there's 2,000 trees underneath of it. 
So I don't know. Military golf courses are kind of interesting. It seems to be a, a lot of them that we like that we don't even know of. Right. I've I've stayed on some military bases with grandpa, like on vacation and stuff. And there are courses there. And I we never played them, but there are courses on these military bases that look pretty sweet. Mine on Air Force Base. Yes. We've played, played that, that on the sim. Do, played it during league. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's our review of lateral hazard. Um don't go. I mean, they need some sort of like they need some sort of tax that goes to military golf ba- uh, yeah. military mm-hmm. golf course. We gotta start a golf fund. Me, let's get some grass out there. Let's get we, some- we do have a golf fund. It's called our paychecks, Tyler. Well, I'm not gonna give my paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna give other people's paychecks to yeah, lateral. There hazard. you go. Yeah, it's 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 the golf course tax. Yeah. You pay in one percent of your paycheck. Mm-hmm. That goes straight to like the greens fees, and ever you can play for free too. Yeah, I mean, if this course was ten miles from here, I would try to get on. But the fact that it is in Cuba, next to Guantanamo Bay, I think they just opened up uh, like travel through to Cuba. Mm. From the U.S., I mm. could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that just happened. Well, like, my buddy got there somehow. Oh, he's in well, the military. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, I think you still got to have travel to get there. Hey, you think you could uh, you could fit me on that uh, that carrier plane? You got hey, there? You, you, got, you, like, you got to smuggle me in. You got an extra room. I'm trying to get a quick nine in before the weekend. Jeez. Big tournament coming up. A lot of bunkers too. Gonna need to get some. A lot of practice. Yeah, the bunkers. The bunkers at, at Lateral Hazard are just military bunkers. Well, you get, yeah, you get, you get, Jesus Christ, Tyler. <laughs> what? Hey, you get tea time at Lateral Hazard and then you just head out to, uh, like, head out on a gravel road or like an old parking lot here in town. Get, and that's, that's your range. Yeah. That's well, your mm-hmm. practice facility to get to Lateral Hazard and shoot as low as you could possibly go. Also, Ryan, I do have some unfortunate news. Um, under the Cuban Trading with the Enemy Act, uh, we cannot fly to Cuba for tourism purposes. Fuck. Uh, shit. Yeah, their their Trading with the Enemy Act prohibits American tourists. So, so it- we got to get. I'm going to join the Cuban embassy as a <laughs> as a delegate for the United States, and I'm going to negotiate open travel for tourism. So open that, golf trips. For, so that, open, yeah. it, it's called Open Golf Trips for the Boys. <laughs> yeah, that, that will be the name of the bill I'll propose yeah. on the floor mm-hmm. to the Cuban embassy. And uh, one day we will be able to play golf at Lateral Hazard and we will get them some goddamn grass. Okay, so answer this question for me. Is Lateral Hazard as exclusive of a course as Augusta? <laughs> yes, maybe more. What course, you have to you don't have what to go course is harder to get on lateral hazard or Augusta Augusta you can get on Augusta by knowing the right people mm-hmm. you can't get on lateral hazard without going through boot camp <laughs> you have to give up four <laughs> years Megan. of your life yeah. yeah yeah you gotta go through what six weeks mm-hmm. of basic training yeah but you got the contract for four years so even if you do get to do it in year two you got to finish out your last yep. two years yep. damn jake your dad was in the military you ever go to cuba no he didn't no he wasn't at the bay of pigs no he was not he's that not was, that old that was the cia yeah the bay of pigs is that like a lord of the flies no 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 no, no. no. watch more uh pre-vietnam yeah gotcha jfk gotcha. big blunder okay well, I think that's on the bucket list for now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Maybe when the Enemy Trade Act. Uh, it's actually the No Trading with the Enemy no Act. No Trading with the Enemy. Hey, I'll tra- <laughs> that's so on the nose. I know it is. Uh, hey, yeah. I'll trade you four dozen Union Green T-Birds. Don't tell them how much that costs. For one round at Lateral Hazard Golf Course. <laughs> it's fair trade. It is. Yeah, but no like, literally, like no fair trade. We'll get there. <laughs> We're progressive society. We'll get there eventually. We will. Um, all right, guys. Episode one AP. All day AP. One twenty eight. Lateral hazard. Put that on the books. Mm-hmm. I'd rather play that course in Pine De Palm, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it's way more exclusive. All four, we had to do was mm-hmm. sign up online to play. Four man scramble. Palm. It's a five hundred dollar entry free for a four man scramble. Thirty six total teams. All the proceeds go to the greens fees. Also Greens keepers. I, I know we're, you're trying to end the podcast, but Pine to Palm is having an absolute is committing an atrocity by not opening it up to a scramble tournament as well. I don't understand that. Like, just have I mean, maybe even a two person scramble. Just open it up a little bit. Get some team golf. Like in a there. like a, and like yes, there are scramble tournaments with payouts. 
But this scramble tournament is like there's a championship division, there's the mid am division, mm-hmm. there's senior division, there's mm-hmm. the flights. There's 14 flights of guy for guys like us. Right. I think that that just brings another level to it. You're gonna make more money. It's gonna go faster. It's not gonna be that bad. Just maybe drop like this this is gonna sound bad coming from the level we are. Maybe drop the last two flights so that you have room to open it up for the scramble tournament. A scramble tournament like of this caliber. Like a really would be serious one. Awesome. Like, you know how intense we get at the Big Irv's charity scramble? Yeah. Imagine how intense we'd get at the Pine to Palm, like, legit tournament scramble. And it, it and it's it's match play. It's 4v4 on yeah. one tee box. Oh, God. That would be sick. So many playoffs. That'd be such a long round. But think, but yes, it would be. But what do the people want, Trevor? Give them what they, they want, want Trevor. They it has want to be, it has to be a 2v2. They can't be a 4v4. I'm fine with that. Yeah. He's into it. 2v2 yeah, this yeah. year, 3v3 next then year. 4v4, just work yep. your way in there. That would be phenomenal. That'd be sick. I want. I just want real, real scramble golf to make a comeback. Like oh. I want to see it on TV. I want mm-hmm. it to be in these prestigious local tournaments. I want to. I want to hear people talk about the strategy on why they're taking this ball versus that ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about uh, when the first three guys miss a putt. The fourth, like the commentators. It talking about the fourth guy this. walking up to that ball, getting his line and draining a putt to win the hole. I want shit like that. Mm-hmm. The, the 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 virtual golf league or whatever that Tiger's doing is fine. It's it's going to bring in some new eyeballs. It's going to change things up a little bit. But like, and it, it's like Ryder Cup format. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't love watching the Ryder Cup? Now it's just the Scramble Cup. Yeah. Where you literally get like a fucking Western omelet in in that bitch when you're done when you win (laughs) yeah it's like the the claret jug from the the open instead of putting beer in it and chugging it you you win a giant silver plate and you just eat a shit ton of scrambled eggs off yeah it's like it's like the celtic here at blarney stone Mm -hmm. uh it's got like eggs and gravy and ham and all that type of shit it's all in the jug when you win Mm -hmm. buddy's got breakfast at the end of the at the end of the tournament yeah you gotta re-energize after a long round of golf Dude, the commentating on that would be sick. Yeah, we got to get who would commentate it. We'll get Pat McAfee. Electric. Yes. And Charles Barkley. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Someone that knows golf. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. That's God. great. Too. <laughs> Those two are just That's a, we're getting dangerously close to Holy Moly hosted by Steph Curry. Oh, God. It's a great idea, dude. And I, again, there's scramble tournaments, but this is like a this is a legitimate. This is the biggest tournament in our area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tom Hoagie, who just shot the course record at TPC Sawgrass, won this tournament. Yes, he did. You know who he beat in the semis? No, Amy Olson, who is an LPGA mm-hmm. professional Dang. golfer. Yep, kind of like the the local legends of professional golf meet in the semis. This is a big tournament. Yep. We need mm-hmm. a scramble format. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's mm-hmm. new. It's new ownership, Tyler. It's it's being run a little bit differently, I would assume. Well, and we know they're listening to this podcast for ideas, so that's a free one. Well, they're listening to see if I slip up and say anything bad about them. <laughs> then they're just gonna carry Man. that man over. Uh, you're gonna get there, like actually, we emailed you and you didn't read it. You're still banned. <laughs> just we gotta I throw can. the email <laughs> thing back in your face. I gotta move on from that. All right, guys. Thanks again for listening into episode one twenty eight. We'll be back next week. We're getting closer and closer to golf season. We're so close. I say that even though it, it snowed a foot in the last week. I know, but it was mm-hmm. it was like 40 degrees yesterday in the middle of the day. Feels good. We're getting there slowly but surely. Love you all. Send the pod to your buddies. See you next week. Love you. Love you. Love you. They fight that the wrong f- way. I'll call the clubhouse. We'll book another 18 for tomorrow. <laughs> okay, they cheated on that. They fucked their balls. Yeah, no better time for the breakfast ball than now. Ha, ha, ha.